Hey Lee Robinson here from American Sentinel K9. Thank you for tuning in. The purpose of this video is to discuss gameness, my opinion of it, and how I learned about it, and how I go about assessing gameness in my own breeding stock. This is a question that I get at least once a month. Um, it's a topic that um, some people get kind of defensive about, some people get um, I guess really offended by it. Some people consider it to be like a holy topic, something that they take very personal. And to me, it's just, while gameness is something that I desire in our dogs, I don't consider to be it to be like some um, sacred topic that we can't discuss. We have a duty to take care of our dogs. And hey, I love my dogs, man. I love dogs. There are places in history where certain things have occurred in the past, gladiator type stories that are ancient stories that we can certainly read about and become educated in. There's also people that live in other countries where certain activities are not illegal like they may be here. And while some people say it's immoral to talk to criminals about those uh, topics or to learn from the recorded history from criminals, well then, you really don't know much about how uh, good moral people learn from the behaviors and actions from those who have done things that are immoral. For example, the FBI, when they want to learn about counterfeiting checks, what do they do? They go talk to people who were experts at counterfeiting checks. There's, there's movies about that. You know, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Catch Me If You Can, I think the name of the movie is, uh, he was a fraud expert. Of course, I believe it's Ill, you know immoral to fraud somebody I think honesty and integrity is extremely important however if I wanted to learn how to stop that or assess that or evaluate that then those are the type of people that you have to be willing to talk to and learn from um, and so it's it's kind of an unfortunate situation now one of the problems with dealing with that is a lot of those immoral people because they're immoral by definition are also willing to be dishonest and lie and deceive and a lot of times they're ignorant and that's a very common um, experience that you'll have in the canine world be careful about who you learn from um, and so what I mean by that is sometimes people have strong opinions on a, on a subject that they really don't know and as you filter through the sources of information that are out there you're gonna learn that some people really can do or explain what others cannot do or explain and the key words here on how you recognize uh, a, a legitimate source is consistency of results you know the people that really don't understand the topic are not going to be consistent and have good results in their field so like when the FBI wants to learn about counterfeit checks they don't go talk to your local crackhead down the street that wrote a counterfeit check at the Dollar General trying to get some what is it uh, I don't even know what this stuff is uh, an allergy pill that people make certain drugs from you know they're not gonna they're not gonna do that they're gonna go talk to people like uh, the guy in the movie Leonardo DiCaprio which was based off of a true story I believe I mean I'm not an expert of that kind of stuff and and find out I think it was a true story because at the end of the movie they talked about how that person in real life worked with the FBI so the FBI could learn how he did all this counterfeiting and fraudulent behaviors because that guy had consistent results in that field also when it comes to measuring a, a canine's willingness to uh, partake in a, an event that could lead to that dog's death, there's a difference in releasing a dog where death is possible versus intentionally setting that dog up where death is inevitable. All right, The latter is obviously cruel and something none of us should ever partake in unless it's absolutely necessary. Now you might think, why would you do that? It, it, it's never necessary. All right, let's just say hypothetically that you have like four criminals working together. They come in with firearms and weapons or knives and something like that. And they broke into my daughter's room and I'm concerned for her life. Hey, I love my dog, but I love my daughter more. Because just like I believe there's degrees of gameness, I also believe there's degrees of love. And I also believe there's degrees of value. And while I may love both of them, that dog's gonna go in there and it's probably gonna die, but maybe it'll get me the five or 10 seconds that I need to get my daughter out of there. All right, however, um, that's not something that's ever happened. 
and it's something that I hope never does happen because I do love my animals and I obviously love my family and last thing I want to uh, catch myself in is a violent situation where death is inevitable all right the same is true for military you know personally soldiers and police officers they put themselves in the line of uh, threat on a fairly regular basis um, it's not every day of course and maybe only once in a lifetime uh, for some of them and sometimes it is the end of their lifetime now there's a mo another movie I use movies for examples a lot of times because it shows the uh, the justification of extremely intense and emotional situations that's why they're you know their movies they're extremely dramatic um, there's a movie about a, a submarine that is leaking radiation and the only way that they can solve the problem for radiation is if the captain of the submarine makes an individual or gets an individual to go in there and seal that leak in the process of doing so um, that individual is going to die okay they're going to get exposed to a level of radiation that even if it doesn't kill them right then it will kill them later and there was amazing soldiers that were volunteering for such things personally I wouldn't ask anybody to go do that and demand that if I was in that situation I would hope that I would be willing to do it myself so I wouldn't have to ask somebody to do that but if you're dealing with a uh, you know and who knows if I would because until we're in those situations that test our our determination we we can only hope that we are determined to do what we believe is moral but when we're actually in that situation sometimes uh, we learn a little bit about ourselves that we don't always like and when I say we I'm not talking about me or you specifically I'm talking about humankind you know there was one person in that movie I, I think that he refused to go in there and uh, I don't even know if he got reprimanded but I think later on he came back in there and thought about his situation and he realized his family was gonna die or something like that so he decided to go in there and I, I think he's the only one that actually died in there after he first refused to go then he thought about it and said you know what I need to do this and he went in there and he worked harder than anybody so what I mean by uh, why I bring that up is determination in one situation doesn't always mean determined determined in another and ironically a lot of people would look at that uh, a radiation leak and consider it to be the same situation since it was the same problem but it really wasn't the same situation because the boy went back to his room and thought about it and he reevaluated the situation and now it meant something different to him and so even though the physical situation was the same the mental situation changed and the mentality of a task has a lot to do with how far a canine will go in, in, in performing a certain task there needs to be uh, degrees of victory along the way because if all it does causes stress then and animals will are more prone to quit than if they have stress and success stress and success back and forth the little bits of success kind of uh, bait that instinct to continue a little longer and so this is a, is something that we can assess by observe observing how a canine works now as far as hog hunting goes, hog hunting is maybe 90 times out of 100, maybe 99 times out of 100. It's not a game test. It's usually a very short-lived event. Uh, a dog goes in there and controls a hog, and in the aspect of controlling the hog, the hunters get in there and we dispatch the hog as quickly as possible because the goal is to not actually game test a, a dog in a hog hunt. However, there are situations where... Um, the hunters can't get in there and relieve that dog from that combat. Maybe there's a, a river. I mean, I know for a fact this has happened. Um, and I know while the dog was successful in, the, in one of these events, it ended up costing the dog's life in another event uh, when something similar happened after. And, but the first time the dog actually, the first time this particular scenario happened with this canine, it crossed the river in extremely cold weather. The temperature was below the 30s, but the river wasn't frozen yet because it hadn't been below 30s for a long period of time and it takes time to freeze water. And the dog crossed the river and worked after it was extremely wet and extremely cold, got to the other side and remained engaged in a hog for over an hour before the hunters were able to get there. When they got there, the hog was dead the dog was possibly going into shock, but the dog was still alive and the dog was still in hold. And it had actually dispatched that hog with a grip on the hog's throat. And uh, that is certainly a very committed dog. And to me, gameness is just a measure of commitment. Now, when I was a kid, we'd sometimes say, hey, I'm gonna go do this. Do you wanna go with me? 
sometimes they would say the same question but in different words <clears throat> such as hey I want to go do this you game that means do you want to go so gameness means about going into something now sometimes individuals will start something and they won't continue and we basically consider those dogs to be either curs or non game or less game it kind of depends on how far they're willing to go I saw someone that had said that they degree they believe in degrees of gameness but then they also said if a dog quits it's not game well if a dog quits okay I would ask actually assess how did it quit did it run and jump the box so to speak and try to get out there because if it was capable of running away then the dog was not actually physically in shock the dog was not mentally in shock the dog actually made a decision to run away and that to me is not only not a game dog it's actually a cur so a cur is a dog that will run away so that's why cur dogs for hunting they run in and they bark and they try to turn the hog around and then when the hog turns around what does the cur dog do he backs up that's why it's called a cur dog Okay, because they're not really committed. They just go in there and bark. But then they, when the hog turns back away, the, hog, the dog comes back in. So they're totally capable of continuing. They just choose not to. And not only do they choose not to, they actually choose to run away. That's why they're called a cur dog. But then there's other dogs that might quit that have not reached death, but at the same time, they're not running away. And now, to me, you're starting to discuss a game dog. Those dogs have not gone into shock necessarily. Maybe some of them have. Uh, maybe they ran out of oxygen. Maybe they have, uh, they have some form of stress that caused their bodies to basically fail. And when their bodies were beginning to fail, the mind kind of went into a, you know, they just kind of zoned out and they're no longer really seeking to go forward, but at the same time, they're not running and jumping the box in a coherent fashion. So to me, um, there are degrees of gameness because some dogs that are still alive can quit without actually curring out and running away. Now this other person said that they, they believe you're either game or you quit, but then they also said they do believe in degrees of gameness. Well, uh, and then they refer to a dog that's knocked out in comparison to a dog that actually died in the combat. To me, uh, saying a dog that got knocked out is less game than a dog that got killed is not a valid statement because a dog that got knocked out is the mentality is actually removed from the equation there's not we're not talking about mentally dealing with stress now we're not talking about mentally mentally dealing with heat exhaustion or dominance or oxygen deprivation or anything along those lines that dog is mentally out of the game so the test would be inconclusive in a, in a case where the dog is actually knocked out however dogs don't generally speak and get knocked out this is not like boxing so um, so that would be an inconclusive statement. It doesn't make sense to me to talk about dogs that get knocked out since even though that can happen, it's such a rare anomaly that uh, you're probably not going to be able to make any decisions there. So anyway, uh, some break free. Hey, and by the way, this topic is important. It's very important because like, especially right now, I mean, we just had the election, the presidential election, and you know, Never in my life have I seen our society as volatile as it is right now. You know, it's unfortunate that that's the case, but it is. I mean, the situation in our society right now is very volatile. And so while none of us would want there to be any type of civil unrest, there are, well, no sane person would want that, um, but there are people in our society that are not sane. And we've seen that because they've like burned down buildings and they there's tyrants out there that want that are willing to uh, destroy what good honest people are out there trying to do and you know personally not only do I think it's right to protect your family and estate I actually think it's moral I saw I know some people I think we have an obligation to protect our family and estate there's some people that say, how dare you consider your property be, to be more valuable than that criminal's life? That's a human life. If the criminal had that same opinion, we'd be okay, because then he wouldn't come in. The criminal uh, views my property to be more valuable than my life, because they come in with weapons and they're willing to use them. So if we actually are gonna uh, use that uh, 
statement as a moral high ground to try to attack good honest citizens, then I'm going to flip that statement back on them and say, don't you wish the criminal had that same respect that would not come into my house? Because I breed uh, band dogs, the American Sentinel is my blo bloodline and my breed and development, which is a band dog dog, for the purpose of protecting my family. That's my primary goal. And then a friend of mine, uh, well, many friends of mine, actually, but one, I was thinking of one in particular who's really involved in my program, but because of this particular topic, I'm going to leave his name out of it. I hope he doesn't mind it. And the only reason I'm leaving his name out is because I didn't get permission to use his name in this video. He uh, does a tremendous amount of hog hunting. And unfortunately, he actually has had dogs that have gotten killed in hog hunting. You know, he's one time he released a, a dog that he actually thought was going to a bay, but it, uh, he couldn't see the bay. And... When he released the dog, the uh, dog actually went into a pack of hogs and they were in kind of a swampy situation. And there were so many hogs that the, the dog amazingly went into hold and did work. But in the process of getting beat up by these uh, hogs, my friend wasn't able to um, stop it because First of all, he had his little girl with him, who's a child, and so he couldn't run in there and leave his little girl in the woods by herself and go in there and try to save his dog, because if he did, he'd probably have gotten killed as well. And then his little girl would have been left in the woods by herself, and that would be a pathetic father to do something like that. He's got to stay with his child to protect his child because hogs can be pretty dangerous. And some people might say, well, if you're afraid to go in there, then you shouldn't hunt. I don't know if what you know about hogs, but hogs destroy property. And this Mississippi territory is not like Texas where you can fly a helicopter over a bunch of hogs and shoot them with an AR-15. And you can't always use traps either. That requires trails and big areas and, and baiting and things like that. And, you know, you, there are places that you can do that and then there's places that you can't. And hogs are a rather prolific problem that are destroying a lot of our resources. So as a good citizen, we have a responsibility to protect our environment. And hog hunters do that, and dogs help us with that. Determination to me is a synonym for gameness, all right? An assessment of gameness. Now, you, you have some dogs that run, that, that run from adversity. They're going to try to get out of there. Those dogs have zero determination, okay? Every time that there's some sort of threat, they wanna go reverse, all right? They, they're like, uh-uh, I wanna live by coward animals, okay? These dogs are not in the game conversation. These dogs are what I refer to as cur dogs, okay? They're non-game dogs. Now, at the extreme opposite end, we have dead game dogs. Now, a dead game dog is a dog that actually has died. So there's very, very few, and, and they remained in hold at the point of death. There's very few and possibly zero dogs on the planet that are alive that are dead game. And you might say, well, you just said they died, they can't be. Well, maybe you were able to bring them back to life with medicine. However, even then, you have to be careful about calling that individual a dead game dog if you brought it back to life because the question is not did it die from the combat but did it remain committed to stay engaged at its point of death and a lot of times people don't know that especially in hog hunting you don't know if that dog was still in hold when it actually died if you're out in the woods and you can't see what actually happened you can see that animal get killed later on from injuries dying later on from injuries and you can see that the dog maybe partake, partook in battle that was extremely long and, and stressful and you know required a lot of endurance, required a lot of heat tolerance, required taking punishment, um, required to work a long time, required getting dominated and beat up uh, for a long, you can see all these things, but you can't see usually in the woods, was the dog still in hold when it actually died and if it was in hold and you're in the woods you're really not likely to save that individual and if you're doing something that was historic historically done like a game testing in a box then it's still going to be extremely difficult to save an animal 
that had such an injury because if the injury killed them very quickly it's probably a pretty ser serious injury and they're gonna bleed out if it's an injury that killed them slowly then stress is, has reached such extreme that that animal is probably going to go in shock and die from that as well. It's kind of debatable how serious that injury really was if you were able to bring them back. And then were they in hold when they, when they reached that point? We don't always know that. Now, to me there's also like deep game. This is a dog that is willing to go to a point that it appears as if it's willing to die but maybe the hunt was over. Maybe you were victorious or maybe you picked up the animal and said, look, we gotta get this animal out of here and get it some medical, medical care. These dogs, they may not have quit, but they may have won or you may have stopped them. The, the, uh, the task was ended before death occurred and so you don't know if they're dead game, but these are very rare dogs that are highly desirable. And they may quit in some situations. Then you have moderately game. To me, a moderately and maybe even a deep game dog, these are sometimes hard to distinguish because if the dog went into shock, that dog might actually quit, but at the same time still be a very game dog to me. And you might think, well, that's terrible. You just called a quitter a game dog. This is where a person that I was disagreeing with, I don't know if they understood what I mean by quit. I'm not talking about a dog that ran away and jumped the box and was physically able to make a, dis a decision to get out of here and avoid conflict because they were a coward. I'm talking a dog that, while not knocked out and where mentality is removed from the equation, I'm referring to a dog where we are evaluating what is this dog thinking and we can't quite tell if the mentality is there or not because they're they've reached a point where their body is no longer functioning properly and when their body is not functioning properly we don't know uh, we can only observe what we see we don't know if their mind is coherent or not these dogs may be stand in line their movements are erratic but they're not engaging so the combat has stopped and to me that's quitting because the combat has stopped it's not the same as running away. It's not the same as a dog that we know for a fact is wanting to get out of there and save its own life uh, by avoiding the situation. It's just a dog that's basically quit combat. And it's quitting combat. Yes, not being knocked out is where the combat also quits. But at the same time, being knocked out is not the mental decision to quit. Uh, but it's also not the decision to run away. And the reason why knockout is different than shock is in shock, the mentality is still kind of there. So you can't, to me, say a dog that's knocked out is a game dog or a cur dog because you really just don't know. I mean, what if the knockout hurt happened in the first five seconds? Uh, someone says, hey, what are you doing? And you're know, at a gas station and somebody comes up and clocks you and knocks you out. You don't know if that person was willing to, to protect their family or not. Um, so, but if a person, uh, let's say, gets punched or, and they go to protect their family and I really should be talking about dogs here because this is the whole perspective that if that dog has taken an injury uh, maybe the, the attacker had a firearm or a knife or a bat or maybe they just picked the dog up and slammed him um, but didn't knock him out but really maybe broke his legs or dislocated his shoulder uh, maybe he got hit on the, the gas pump or whatever that's at the station and got cut by the edge of the pump. I mean, these are all hypotheticals that you can look up in real situations and you can see animals get injured sometimes. There's no species on the planet that is as formidable as a human being and it's not because we are a superior uh, physical specimen, it's because mentality allows us to use weapons and in sometimes cases when we don't have a weapon, we'll use the environment as the weapon. The, you know, I saw a, a video not long ago, some of you may think, may have seen it, where they were saying how great a certain police officer was because he was willing to box with the, the kids in the street and, and try to have relationships and I thought that was completely foolish because they were doing it on concrete and they were trying to hit each other. And while it was uh, training and fun, you hit somebody on the concrete and, that, and they fall and they hit their, their head on the concrete, they could be dead. 
and what kind of police officer would be negligent enough to accidentally kill somebody that's trying to do community service. If you want to do community service and, and teach people to box, that's great. I have no problem with that, but do, use the proper equipment. Because, use your brain. We're smarter than that. Do it in a ring where there's padded grounds and people don't get injured in the community because you're trying to do something nice for them. All right, that's just negligence. But as a smart human being, even if you don't have weapons, you can find weapons in the environment, such as concrete. So, you know, animals can get hurt. And it takes a degree of gameness to be willing to go back in after an injury has occurred. So, we may have dogs that are shallow in their in their gameness. And shallow, of course, is just a antonym of deep. So, what I mean here is maybe the dog will kind of take a little bit Maybe gets punched in the face, gets a broken nose, you know, if you're, like, again, comparing to a human being. But then he gets punched again after the nose is already broken. He's like, you know what, this really isn't for me. Uh, I'm not going to run away, but I will, you know, I'll, I'll definitely turn and maybe try to avoid the situation. Or, um, uh, and if I push really hard, they may even run away. I don't want anything to do with these dogs. I, I, can't, uh, I can't stand either of those, to be honest with you. Some of the moderately game dogs, though, will turn, especially if they've gone into shock. So they have quit. Mentally, they have quit. We just don't know why they quit. Uh, they're still coherent, but they definitely quit. Okay? To me, you have to look at a lot of things. And you're like, why would you ever breed a dog to quit? Okay? Can't say that I would, but at the same time, I have to look at everything that the dog breed brings to the table see there's a lot of things that matter when you're evaluating dogs for protection work or hog hunting work obviously gameness is one of those things that may be top priority another thing that might matter is skill set skill set is different than determination skill set this is empty i think there we go. Skill set is different than determination. So, skill set means how capable is that animal? Is it physically um, able? Skill set has to do with um, the physical coordinations, the abilities of the animal, skill or ability. This is a, this is. Uh, an important attribute to producing a very capable dog because what degree is what how important is commitment if there's no skill I mean if this is a uh, a very determined animal but at the same time it's as fragile as let's say a, a chihuahua then you're just wasting your time okay so determination is most important but that skill has got to be there too and you also need to be kind of durable and you need to be healthy and for a protection dog or hog hunting dog, you also need stability. So let's just say you have a moderately game dog, but this particular animal is so strong in these other categories, you have to remember when you breed an animal, you can't breed just that one trait. You can select for one trait, but you can't only breed one trait. So whenever you breed to an individual and you take that individual's gametes, their sperm or their egg, you're going to potentially take any trait that they have and enter it into the gene pool. But while only half of their genome comes in, it could be any combination of what they show, what they display, or what they maybe even don't display. If it's in their gene, you know, maybe it's a recessive trait that you can't see. So it's going to it's going to come in. But, you know, over time we have to ask which of these traits are we gonna gonna seek? So, you know, this is different than a, a box scenario where people are actually putting the, their dogs in situations and continually, intentionally putting the dog's life on the line. I'm not gonna do that. But I, what I will do is I will uh, communicate with some of these people who are experts in their field. And sometimes it's through reading and sometimes it's through communication. That's just uh, my perspective. Now, when it comes to who should we learn from, 
I don't believe in casting pearls to swine. You know, one of the problems with social media is there's so many people out there that really have no understanding on a particular subject. And they have opinions, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having an opinion. But people really need to reassess themselves and ask themselves, are you a teacher or a student? Can you do or explain what I cannot do or explain? If you can't do it, you don't have any knowledge in it, you might need to like be careful about sharing your opinions on things unless you're going to say, I think this might be true. What do you think? I'm trying to learn. That would be fine. But when you're going to have strong opinions on something and you're going to try to shove your opinions on other people to accept your view, then you really need to have some experience in the field, in my opinion. You can disagree if you want to. But because there's obviously a lot of people that do disagree with that, they do shove their opinions on social media and they have zero experience, I'm really not too interested in sharing my views on social media all the time. I'm more interested in, in uh, I'm willing to share my views, I guess, but I just, it's not, not something I seek out and I definitely don't seek out conversation on social media because there's just too many people that'll dominate your time and you're not able to uh, uh, spend your time wisely on social media because you know even if I live to be a hundred I'm 51 now and my days are numbered and so you know if I want to really be efficient in learning while I can learn from anybody I'll be much more efficient learning from people that can do or explain what I cannot do or explain so I need to seek out people that have experience in education rather than seeking conversation that with you know greenhorns or just anybody on the internet that really has an opinion and they want to uh, evaluate that philosophy if they think that they're right I would challenge them or ask them or you know suggest to them go out and pursue uh, your interest don't ask me to spend my money and my work and my time pursuing your interest because that's a huge investment uh, having a large kennel with a large number of dogs cost me a lot of work it cost me a lot of time it cost me a lot of money and uh, it cost me a lot of education so I'm going to invest in my program in the way that I believe and if I want to be efficient in that I need to talk to people who are successful uh, I need to talk to people who are educated in that field I need to talk to people who have experience in that field and their education uh, is validated through theory and proof and their experience is validated with proof of concept and you know all this is measured through consistency of performance um, this is important to me and that's where I like to find my teachers it doesn't mean that I can't learn from someone else it doesn't mean I have a God complex it just means I'm trying to be efficient with my time and my money and my work and that's because I want to be successful you know if you want to just communicate with anybody then social media is the place for you but you know I hardly ever post on some of these social media platforms anymore because the return on investment, which means my money and my time and my efforts, is really minimal, okay? And I don't mean that to be disrespectful. I'm actually, I respect the people in these groups and that's why I try to give when I can. Um, and if somebody disagrees with me, that's okay. But don't ask me to submit to your view when you don't have any education in this view and all the leg legends in this field actually have opinions that disagree with you no disrespect intended but I have to pursue what I believe in I hope there's no animosity towards this video I went out of my way this morning to try to share this because gameness is an important topic when it comes to producing hog dogs and protection dogs uh, it's a it's a relative topic that has value to people that want to protect their family or or to be efficient when they're hog hunting because we can't have a dog that quits uh, in a point where it and chooses to do that if a dog will choose to let go because when you're hog hunting you can't have a dog that chooses to let go and is willing to run away because that's going to leave your hunters and your children that are hunting with their family in a dangerous situation where they can get really injured those dogs the only time that they're allowed to quit basically is if their body or their mind is no longer able to uh, really pursue the mind might be willing but the body can't and so the bot they, the dog quit uh, and then other times maybe the dog was going into shock and you're like thinking 
Well, yeah, the dog quit, but he ne never ran away because he just he didn't quit while he was still able to run away. The dog was committed until he was no longer able to perform. But he did quit. He did lay down, and maybe if he he wasn't like moving on the ground trying to get back up uh, and to engage again. That to me is a dog that's still seeking to go forward. That's a deep deep game dog. When that individual is moving on the ground and trying to re-engage but physically can't do so, then the dog mentally didn't quit, but he's no longer able to perform. Then there's dogs that just kind of just lay there like <sighs> that dog runs, that's a cur. That's not a game dog to me. That's a cur. But a dog that quits laying down and is not trying to get up, that's a, to me a deep game dog or a moderately game dog. It's not running away, but it's not going forward. Maybe it could a deeper game dog would be a dog that's struggling to re-engage. Uh, but anyway, these are situations that are very rare. You know, we're not like going out and putting our dogs in these types of situations on a regular basis. Let me close with this. This is a quote from uh, D'Amato, um, Mike Tyson's trainer. He says, I don't create. What I do is I uncover and discover. And then I find that spark. And when I take that spark, I fan it until it becomes a flame. And then when it becomes a flame, I put little pieces of kindling on it, little sticks, and I turn it into a fire. And when it turns into a fire, now I can put bigger sticks on it. And then it becomes a roaring blaze. And when it becomes a roaring blaze, I put logs on it. And then, wow, you really have something. And that's what we as breeders need to do. We uncover and discover, and we selectively breed to turn those sparks that we see to be valuable, these traits, we turn those sparks into a gene pool where these traits are now into a flame. Now we have something that as a trainer, we do the same thing. We find those individuals when they're young that have that spark and we develop those dogs with that spark until it becomes a flame. And when it becomes a flame, we continue to develop it until it becomes a fire and we continue to develop it. And this is called schooling in the game dog world. If you want to do, get, do, look, take this information and do some research on schooling. You don't have to be a dog fighter to do this. You don't have to participate in any illegal activities to learn from the criminals in the world that have done some things that you and I consider to be immoral. You can learn that when they talk about schooling, they're developing, they're training, and they're conditioning these animals to be successful in what they do. We can take that same mindset and develop these individuals into hog dogs and protection dogs. And man, when you do that, you really have something. So the breeder is after the gene pool and the trainer is after the behavior being displayed and, and knows how to cultivate that. And to me, a good dog man can do both. That's what it is to me. I hope y'all have a blessed day and I'm gonna quit it with, uh, sign out with uh, D'Amato's quote on uncovering and discovering the sparks and then cultivating that spark into a roaring blaze. Y'all have a blessed day.